Hey, welcome back to another Rooftop Tuesday. Not on the roof, but in the new studio space, and today we're gonna to be exploring the Zoom F1 and how it compares to the Tascam DR2. So the Zoom F1 is Zoom's way of competing, in my opinion, with the Tascam DR10L, which was a killer recorder that was small in its size and also really compact and uh, discreet and good for wedding video as well as like small budget video stuff. So the F1 competes with that because it is a lavalier into a recorder, it doesn't transmit. It's a recorder and it's standalone. Some of the best things about it, it does record at higher sample rates. So you can do all the way up to 96K when you're recording 24-bit audio. Important if you like that kind of thing, not that important if you don't like that kind of thing. So then the other thing that's huge about this Zoom is you can actually put Zoom capsules on it. What these do is separate the Zoom, in my opinion, from the DR10L. If you want to record good stereo audio, you need to pick up one of these Zoom stereo capsules, XY capsules that comes with like the H6. However, if you don't have an H6, for me it's not even practical to try and get these things just for use with this. To put on top of your camera, just invest in some sort of a Rode mic that goes on top of the camera. So where the F1 shines, in my opinion, is its digital limiters actually work. They do create kind of a noise floor issue because they're so powerful, they're bumping and really killing your dynamic range, which as we know, brings up that noise floor. So the hissing that you're gonna hear regularly is gonna be a little higher, but it's actually keeping from clipping, which is really important. In the DR10L, if you ever have used that limiter, you'll notice that it actually doesn't work at all. When you start getting to that clip point, you'll get that distortion. The other thing about the Zoom F1 is it does have this belt clip, which is practical like the DR10L or any sort of a small recorder you want on somebody, but it also has this belt loop where you can actually string your belt through these two metal bar situations. But for me, that's just wildly impractical. It makes it very bulky and compared to the DR10L, it's just a bulky design. As you remember in the DR10L, this little recorder does have its little belt clip. It is much more discreet in its size. And the thing that makes this win, in my opinion, before we even get into the sound, it has backup recording. As you know, backup recording is critical and it's one of my favorite things that a recorder can offer. If you can record a track at like 10 or 15 or 20 decibels below your main signal, that's gonna work so much better than a limiter, gonna work so much better with than auto levels. Auto levels, however, with the DR10L aren't that good in my opinion. When you use them, they sound really sporadic. They boost the room tone way high when no one's talking and then when someone talks, it clips briefly. With the F1, I think they've really done a great job with auto levels. It still has that issue where if you come in real hot in a quiet situation, it's gonna clip. So you'd use a limiter and an auto level at the same time, but it sounded really natural to me. So if you're the type of person that uses auto level, of which I am not, then this is something that you should check out. So what I wanna do now is just take both these recorders, sit down and have a brief conversation about the actual sound. The most important part of any audio component is the sound. What does it sound like? And sound can tend to be subjective, so I just want you to hear it. F1 with its included mic, DR10L with its included mic, as well as the more high quality Countryman B3, a popular and more high-end lavalier microphone plugged into both of these devices. So we're starting with the Tascam DR10L classic recorder. If you've not, if you don't own one of these, you've heard this on my channel. One thing you will notice as we're talking about this noise floor and actual audio quality is the room is very live. This room is hard surfaces. All four surfaces are very hard and big, meaning sound just bounces around a lot. So hopefully that's consistent between all of these tests, although it's not ideal for recording. But like I said last week, you, you want aesthetic, you can't have good sound. And if you want good sound, you can't have good aesthetic. That's not totally true, but in this case it is. Tascam DR10L. So then Tascam DR10L with the Countryman B3, this tiny low profile mic is famous for its lack of rustle sounds. If you've ever worked with Lobs, you know you get rustle sounds. The B3 is supposed to be low on rustle, which is great. But how is its noise floor? Does it have self noise? Does it introduce noise into the recorder or into the signal? We're gonna be testing that between this and the F1, which you've already heard. So here's just a noise floor of the B3 into the DR10L. Other than that, it's a really, really discreet mic. It's very teeny tiny. If you compare it to the included mic in the DR10L versus the included mic in the F1, it is very, very small. Very small form factor, which is modern, sleek, and beautiful, and we love it. 
Now we have the included mic that comes with the F1 into the DR10L. So how does this mic sound with the DR10L? I already know right now it's pretty hot, so maybe this is a hotter mic, maybe it responds differently to the power of the recorder. And I'm holding a little, holding a little bit further away because I don't want to get my breath sound on it. There's no wind protection on this. And I'm just kind of generally estimating where it would be on somebody's shirt. So here's the noise floor of the F1's included lavalier microphone. And some trucks. F1, F1 included mic. I've used this mic multiple times over the last few weeks on shoots with its mic and the Countryman B3. It records a good signal in my opinion. Here's the noise floor of the included F1 mic with the Zoom F1. Overall, it sounds decently crisp. Underneath clothing, it wasn't quite as good as the DR10Ls, which I was really impressed with that mic of how it picks up audio underneath clothing. And again, you can put a low cut on this the same way you can low cut the DR10L if you like to do that in recording versus in post-production. F1, Tascam DR10L microphone. So this is the included microphone. It looks a lot like the Sennheiser ME2, but no one has either confirmed or denied that it's the same microphone. But this capsule into the F1. So we're gonna do a quick noise floor. DR10L included microphone, F1 recorder. This time I got the Countryman B3 with the Zoom F1. So we're gonna do a little noise test right off the bat here of this B3 with the F1. Playing all these side by side, it's up to you to decide which one you want the best. How do the character of the mic sound? What is the difference in between them? Which one is more boomy? Which one has more of a high end and why? And that's, those are the decisions that you need to make if you wanna pick out a, a recorder like the Zoom F1. But this has been the Countryman B3 Zoom F1. <clears throat> So overall, I think the F1 is a good recorder, but I don't see a real practical use for it out in the field if you have a DR10L. If you don't have a DR10L and you want a small recorder, it will accomplish that. But if you do weddings, it's totally impractical in its bulkiness and its size. If you do pro stuff, it could make a lot of sense. If you wanna just put it on your talent, if you're doing interviews, it does record at those higher sample rates, which a lot of us like, it's more data to work with. The DR10L doesn't record that high, it only goes up to 48K. So to go all the way up to 96 is something that is desirable if you're really into editing audio. However, if you're using a lavalier signal, I don't know why you would want that much because it's a lav signal and it's just not the best anyway. So it's gonna be hard to make that sound super good. As I said earlier, the biggest pros to the F1 were its ability to have those capsules on it. If you already own those capsules, recording at a high sample rate, a limiter that is really functional as well as good auto levels. The cons are its size, its shape, the ergonomics of it are not that practical for hiding, as well as it doesn't have backup recording, which is the huge thing that made the DR10L, I think, so popular. It's backup recording versus its sleek design. The reason I spent so much time talking about both of them is that I got a lot of questions about the F1 and how it would compare to the DR10L for somebody who wants to get into the audio game and they own no recorders. It'd be a great one to start if that's you for just lavalier setup. Thank you so much for watching another video of mine. I truly appreciate each and every one of you that choose to subscribe to the Audio Gospel Fam, join the fam, join the movement as we move towards 100K in 2018. Like the video if you haven't already, subscribe if you haven't already. Be sure and follow me on Twitter at Oliver J. Hughes. That's where we connect outside of YouTube, talk about audio, answer questions that way. And with nothing else, I will see you next time.